Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to yet another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. We are out here once again out on Rancho Del Arroyo. This is actually the continuation of yesterday's video, which the video itself was shot all in one take. That is one big block hour long of footage. So today is just going to be wrapping up, and today we're going to be covering your actual grind itself as far as how hunting pressure can work, how hunting pressure can affect things. We're going to talk about troubleshooting, if your animals aren't showing up, what you can do. We're going to talk a little bit about how herd management is viewed and some of the things that are a part of it and some of the things that are not a part of it. I'm going to talk about my personal view and what I do and what I choose to do and why. I did mention it in yesterday's video, but we are going to retouch on that topic. And then we're going to kind of get to the end and we're going to talk about, you know, what to do when your desired trophy does spawn. And after that, we'll wrap up the video. So without further ado, let's jump right back into it where we left off yesterday. We are going to start talking about hunting pressure. So I will see you out there. So the next thing that we're going to talk about since we are up here at this lake is hunting pressure. So you'll see that this is pretty bright pink and that's why I wanted to come up here. So you can shoot a certain number of animals in a zone without damaging that zone itself with a few slight specifications. So here I've got, you know, two zones. They're both herds at this lake. So I used to have a single mule deer here. He's no longer there, which means he could have moved somewhere on this lake or he could have moved down here or down here or even up here. I don't know where he's at. I haven't refound him again yet. So as far as hunting pressure works, you can shoot on the ground four animals and it will blow the zone out. If I shot four animals here, this would be neon pink and that zone would disappear and any zone underneath of that shading of pink purple would disappear. Now all of your hunting structures, all of them, no matter what type they are, do a 75% reduction to hunting pressure. So that means I can shoot instead of four to blow out the zone, it would be 16 to blow out the zone. So I could shoot 15 animals in a tripod, tree stand, ground line, whatever you want it to be. I could shoot 15 and not blow out the zone. Now, if I didn't want to use hunting structures and I was hunting on the ground, but I wanted to bow hunt a lot, bows do a 50% reduction to hunting pressure. So for every two shots with a bow is, is equivalent to a single shot with any firearm. So I could shoot up to seven animals in a zone and not blow it out with the bow on the ground. And now these effects can be stacked. So if I were to use a bow in a structure, I can use a bow in a hunting structure and kind of effectively incur absolutely zero hunting pressure because the amount of hunting pressure that you create with a bow in a hunting structure is so little that by the time you would technically start building up hunting pressure to a degree where you would blow out the zone, it has already started to pull away from the original hunting pressure. I tested this out over on Te Aoroa at the twin fallow lakes i called every fallow in that would listen to me and i would shoot them with the bow and i left them laying on the ground so that way i could count them and i ended up with i think gosh 27 fallow on the ground and it looked like a single shot with a bow was taken that's all it looked like was there it wasn't hardly anything at all just the lightest little hint of, oh, I shot something there. Now, I don't have a buck back here yet. So I'm just going to immediately move on. I'm not super worried about hanging out here. We'll go down here and hope that something pops up. Especially for my next topic, which is going to be what to shoot. So as far as what to shoot, there's a couple you know, things to con take into consideration with it. Um, if you, you know, want to do herd management, and we'll get into that in a little bit, um, but for the most part, 
when it comes to grinding, you're really only shooting males. Unless, you know, you're trying to find a rare female for something, or if the females are the diamond, like, you know, the hair species, the females are the diamonds of the quattro rabbits, you're going to be grinding the females and not the males. You're going to want to look at, you know, level, you're going to want to look at score, and, like, is shooting a female a bad thing? Can it ruin it? Some people say yes, some people say no. I don't think it really affects it, but that's me personally. And, you know, should you have, like, a pretty hard-to-find line on what you shoot and what you don't shoot, or should you have kind of a, you know, soft line on whether you'll shoot it or not? Just depends on how you're feeling. So we're going to talk about what I personally am doing for this mule deer grind. So for me... I'm going to leave my level 1s and my level 2s, unless they're rare. That's that's the exception, unless they're rare. And that does include the dilute. Because to me, I'm thinking of it as I'm harvesting the mature bucks. So I'm not going to harvest these little guys who still need to you know grow up and mature. It's not a buck that I would want to take when I'm hunting anyway. I'd rather take a mature buck. Now, I know that Call of Wild doesn't have an actual aging mechanic to it, I'm aware. Uh, that's just how I choose to think of it, is I'm hunting for mature bucks, and that's why I'm looking for a trophy, is I'm hunting the matures, getting the old genetics out, letting the new ones grow up a little bit. Not that they actually grow, but that's just the way that I choose to think about it. And now, as far as my level 3s go, I do have a few level 3s, as you'll notice, that's a level 3. I am not considering him a shooter buck because I decided that my hard line for what I'm going to shoot for a level 3, their score estimate has to go over 215. And that is still a silver scoring deer. If their score estimate goes up to 216, I'll shoot it. No problems. But that's a guaranteed silver. At best. Because they don't make gold, again, until 220.5. And that's just where I'm choosing to make the line. You know, you don't have to follow that. You can do it however you want. It's your game. It's your hunt. Play it how you like. If you're, you know, having a hard time finding some animals, there could be a couple of things going wrong with it. So this zone, sometimes I have issues with my scent coming down the hill. Sometimes, you know, your tents are a little too close. Sometimes you're within render before you fast travel there. When you fast travel somewhere, nothing within 200 meters should be rendered in or spawned in. So, ideally, you know, I could fast travel in. These guys are at 247. You know, this guy's at... 160, but he did come walking in from over here because that's the direction that he takes to get to his zone. Um, some other things that can, you know, kind of mess you up is going to be if you hunt with the dog, if you use the ACV in any capacity, um, you're going to want to keep a mind on gunshot spook distances, which is different for some guns. So the 22 LR or the 22 handgun have a much smaller spook distance than, you know, uh, like the M1 that I'm using. Now you'll see that this guy does technically hit that 215 mark, but since he doesn't go, to go over 215, I'm not going to harvest him. It's anything over 215. Hard line for me unless they were rare. I figure it's probably been long enough. I can go back to this place at where we were at the beginning and try a second shot on that dilute. Some other things that might spook your animals is going to be predators. Now here on Rancho, with hunting the mule deer, um, I do have a predator that does affect my animals, but I believe every map that has mule deer has a predator that affects the animals. So mule deer are on Parque Fernando, SRP, Silver Ridge Peaks, um, or Rancho Del Arroyo. And on Rancho, they spook from the bobcats. On Silver Ridge Peaks, they spook from the puma. On, you know, Parque, they, or Silver Ridge, it's the mountain lion. And on Parque, they spook from the puma. So, you know, you've kind of got to pick your battles a little bit. 
I decided that I could handle bobcats much better than I could handle puma. Because bobcats aren't going to go aggressive. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. Now, if you are running into some stuff like this, or like this with myself, if the hunting pressure is getting overwhelming, even though you're using some tripods, it can be good just to have another area on the map that you hunt something other than your grinding species. So for me, if I wanted to go hunt something else, I could go, you know, over here and look for turkey, whitetail, jackrabbit, javelina, just really anything else. I think he's back. Yep, there he is. So that's something that you can kind of do if the hunting pressure is getting overwhelming or if you seem to be blowing out zones if you don't already have, you know, hunting structures in place to deal with that. Pick this guy up. Oh yeah. So we hit his ear and a little bit of an antler it seems. So otherwise it would have lodged right in there and we should have gotten the far lung. But second time we solved it. We got a double lung. No problems at all. We are going to taxidermize that because the dilute fur type is a rare fur type for the mule deer now. It used to be an uncommon, but it is completely rare now. He is a 219, just shy of gold. And that kind of goes with, you know, getting to know the species that you want to hunt and the species that you want to grind and just getting used to it. Now, if your animals just aren't showing up when you think that they're supposed to be showing up. Um, you know, as far as the mule deer go, I know that there can be bobcats interfering with them on their way to their zone, so I don't really place too big of a deal on it. And I'll just, you know, keep going, move on. Here's a shooter buck. Get a little bit further out than I'm used to, but we should be able to manage it. Oof, perfect. Now you'll notice the difference in a shot taken from a tripod and a shot taken from the ground. Definitely a big difference there. And that's where that information kind of plays in with how many shots, how many animals you can take out before you blow out a zone. But if your animals aren't showing up on time, there's a couple of options that you do have. Uh, you can, you know, check your time make sure that you're within zone time it is 15 45 that's within 14 to 17 so i know that my deer should be there um if they're not i could change the time i could you know go to the main menu and load back in but that does erase any animals that are on the ground that you have not yet picked up switching maps is another way that you can do it if you want to open up this go to your reserve selection select another map load into there and then do the same thing and load back into the map that you were grinding on. Uh, you could close the whole game if you want, you know? Or you can just hang out, sit in a stand, and wait, which is usually what I choose to do. I don't mind changing time if I run out of zone time while waiting in a stand. That doesn't bother me too much. I'd rather, you know, sit, chill, wait, hop in somebody else's stream chat and talk to them for a couple of minutes while I'm waiting. Oh, we got neck shot. That is one of the things that I did decide to try the 30-06 M1 for, is because it's got some really nice penetration for being a 4-8 weapon. Most of the 4-8 weapons I went through the store and like looked at all the ammunition, most of the 4-8 weapons have a penetration of 40. The 30-06 ammunition has a penetration of 45. So that's why I figured, eh, I'll give it a try. I still don't think I'm going to stick with it. I still think I'm going to switch back to my 303, but that's right now. <laughs> that might change. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Do have some deer over there. So we're going to talk about next is how many kills is it going to take for you to get, you know, what you want. And for some of them, none of us know. For, you know, like the great ones, there's a good amount of information out there that we can give people like general averages for how long it's going to take to get the trophy you want, which, you know, for most people is a great one. For me right now, I want a super rare muley. So for the white-tailed deer great one, you're going to be looking at about one to 3,000 kills. And these are averages, not everybody. That is kind of an important fact to keep in mind. If she drinks, I can get the shot over her into him. 
Or, if he lifts his head, I might be able to do it still. Got it! Now I do have a tent over here just to pick these guys up. As far as the red deer go, I would say the average Great One grind is anywhere from two to 4,000. Uh, black bear, it's a little different. It's more like 3,000 to 10,000. Uh, moose, I would say one to two, sometimes three. Oh, next shot. Uh, fallow deer, I'd really say it's just like one to 3,000. It's, it's not a whole lot. Um, it's about on par with the whitetail, but somehow still easier. <laughs> Uh, how do you know when the Great One will spawn or your trophy will spawn? You don't. It's completely just RNG. That's all it is. You're just, you know, rolling the dice. Um, like, technically, I think the average is supposed to be 1 in 10,000, so that's why the bear kind of caps out at 10,000, because by that time you should have ideally gotten one. <laughs> ideally. You know, some people have way better luck than others. There are a lot of content creators who, you know, struggle to get great ones. And then there are other content creators who seem to, you know, have a little lucky rabbit's foot in their pocket. And they're, you know, getting great ones as little as, I don't know, 500 kills, I think, is one of the lower ones that I've seen from a content creator. Uh, but, you know, then there's other people who have to wait 10,000 kills or more. Uh, and what what are you gonna do? You know when that you know trophy that you're after spawns, whether that be the great one, a super rare, a diamond, you know whatever it is that you're grinding for. What what do you what do you do? What do you do? Uh, first, congratulate yourself. Uh, you did that. You spawned that. You did the work. Uh, second, freak out a little. It's allowed. You know you can get a little excited. If you've seen my great one fallow deer re uh, video, that is my live reaction to seeing it. Freak out a little bit, you've earned it, and then kind of sit with yourself for a couple of minutes and make a plan. So, are you going to you know, use a different weapon from the one that you've been grinding with? Uh, and if you are, I highly recommend taking some practice shots. Highly recommend it. Could not recommend it enough, actually. And for him, I'm actually going to fast travel here because I can cross that water instead of walking all the way around. Um, and if you are going to use, like I said, a weapon that you did not grind with and did not get used to over, you know, possibly 10,000 kills, definitely want to take a little bit of time, take some practice shots with it, like at least three, if not more. And then, you know, congratulations, taxidermize it. Uh, you've gotten a cool trophy, whether that be the diamond, rare, super rare, great one, a ton of in-game money, ideally, if it was a fairly long grind. A lot of practice with hunting that species and getting to know that species and that map. And lots of practice with the weapon that you use for the grind. And what's next? You can start over. You can move on. It's it's up to you, 100%. Do what makes you happy playing the game. Play the game for yourself, not for anybody else. Have a good time doing it. So I have rambled on for an hour and... I think I've shot four things <laughs> um, successfully. I missed a few shots in there. But with that, we're going to wrap up this video finally. I will be... Alrighty, and with that, I believe that might be the last bit of topics that we can talk about as far as grinding goes, what to do, why to do, where, how, the whole nine yards. Um, if you think that I have missed the topic, please you know, reach out in the comments, let me know if there's something else that you'd like me to touch on or if there's something else that might require a whole nother video like this. It was a lot of information thrown at you guys and, you know, please take your time with the video, pause it if you need to, read through the things. I do recommend viewing this on a computer screen or a TV if that's an option for you. Uh, it will be kind of hard to see some stuff that I've highlighted or circled on a phone or a mobile device, but a tablet might do the trick for you. Um, but I really, really highly recommend taking your time with the videos that we've put out covering the grinding. And, you know, please reach out in the comments if you have anything to say, you know, whether it be good, whether it be criticism, let me know. I'd love to hear it. I love getting feedback on my videos. 
but thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate everything that you guys do for me. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!